As I sat here this morning, I realised that uh, most of the discussions were at a very high uh, um, macroeconomic level and political level, and I'm going to pitch mine a bit lower at the moment. So, uh, um, but hopefully you'll see how uh, the Catapult Centre, in particular CPI, has assisted a small company like ourselves, and we're very much at the small end of the SME scale. Uh, I'm not going to talk about graphene today. If you want to find out about that, you can go on... Uh, many websites or I'll talk to you afterwards, but uh, I want to talk about where we've come from and explain about our story, or at least the first couple of chapters in our, in our story. So the, uh, the business started in 2010 with an idea from a professor at the uh, inorganic chemistry department at uh, Durham University, uh, and he was supported by the tech transfer group at the university. And with, uh, I think it was this gentleman, with proof of concept funding from the North East. Was it you, sir? I'm not sure. No. Yeah. Um, proof of concept funding from the, from the North East, from Newcastle. Um, Carl managed to get a demonstrator of how to make graphene at a, uh, a lab size scale. And then following support from uh, venture capital funding uh, from a couple of small VCs, were able to scale up that process to a reasonable level. And at that stage, we moved on to the Wilton site, which is uh, co-located where, where CPI are, the old ICI premises. Uh, and we, we moved into a purpose-built space, which is a great starting point for a small chemical company like ourselves with facilities provided so that we could hit the ground running. And we began commercial development activities with customers um, in the first half of last year. So we've actually only been trading, uh, trading stretching the word a little bit. We're quite pre-revenue, but we've been uh, trading with companies for about 18 months now. I joined just in July of last year, so I've been with the company all of 15 months. And I'm not, as Graham's talked about, I'm not the innovator. I'm the, I'm, I've been brought in as a gun for hire to help take the business on from a conceptual level to commercialization um, and given good tools I hopefully can make a good job of that. Within four months um, we decided we needed to get a good financial platform for the business and we felt the opportunity was right, the time was right, we had a good story, we hopefully had a, a reasonable uh, management team to take the business on and we successfully listed on AIM in an eight week period in November 2013. Um, and that gave us the confidence and financial background to be able to plan for the future, which is uh, a set of circumstances for which I'm very grateful. So we are uh, a one-trick pony, effectively. We, we make a product called graphene. It's a form of carbon, and it should be thought of as an, an additive, and I would like to use the hyperbole super additive because of its base properties. It adds a lot of um, mechanical, thermal, and electrical properties into the host matrix. And where we see applicability for this product initially was from the first ideas um, developed or first isolated by a couple of professors at Manchester University um, who were awarded a Nobel Prize in 2010. But the first real production applications were things like a tennis racket. Um, which apparently, according to the, uh, according to the spin, gives um, some additional strength and stiffness and a better sweet spot on the racket. I haven't noticed it myself, but uh, I did pay £25 extra for the privilege. So, um, Where we think and see graphene going, um, and particularly the form of graphene that we manufacture, are into these industrial applications. So graphene as a product as I say, is an additive, and where we're, what we're looking to do is augment the properties of whatever we put it into, be that a paint and coating, an oil and lubricant, or a polymer and composite. What we specifically do, we've come up with a, a method of synthesizing graphene, so starting with carbon atoms and reassembling them to form a... 2D carbon lattice, which is, which, which is by definition graphene. 
Um, but it's not just in terms of uh, assembling the carbon atoms that's important, it's how you put them together. And it's what properties that then trans translate into the host matrix, which is important. And that comes full circle for those of us in the, in the chemical process industry. You know if you make a change to the process, you can expect a change in the end product. And this is absolutely true in the world of graphene. My previous 29 years were in the field of carbon fiber, and everyone talks about carbon fiber as though it's a single product. Well, I know there are 80 different grades of carbon fiber that are available today. So it's not a one single product. And that's important that the process dictates the performance of the end product. And then, of course, we're not just making a base material. What we're doing is putting it in a format that is most user-friendly for our customers. So we're listening to what customer challenges are and asking them how they would like that material best presenting. And that's our value-added step. So that's more of the high-value manufacturing, which is implicit in the catapults mantra. The thing that's hidden behind the picture and we, we don't show because uh, it's a little bit of our know-how is an asset that uh, CPI helped realize. Um, so we had some of the base uh, knowledge of how to create graphene in our process and CPI helped us realize that. And so the plant that you can see there that's about eight meters tall sits at Wilton, manufactures graphene and was installed and, and help engineered by CPI. And ultimately our customers are the people that will then apply this material technology and create either additive properties in their materials or create a, a, a cost, a process cost saving um, by reducing the number of steps in their existing processes. So we're very much targeted on these three core segments. Um, I think it's always a danger to, if you, if you try and predetermine where a new technology might go, and the first art of selling is actually to listen. Um, and so we're, we're out listening to what the challenges within the industries where we think there might be applicability, what those challenges are, and then best how we can best position ourselves to satisfy some of them, recognizing we've just got a single role to play within that probably. So without talking about the, the product to search, but these are the kind of areas where we think our product may um, deliver some innovation and benefits to our customers. Graphene by adding properties such as enhanced electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, scratch and abrasion resistance and lubricity can have applications such as lightning strike situations potentially on aircraft, um, corrosion resistance for uh, extreme environments on things like ship hulls where you're trying to overcome uh, corrosion on the, on the steel hulls, but also uh, anti-fouling and helping with um, speed of, of boats through the water and therefore a, a cost saving on fuel. In the composites industry, so these could be fiber-enforced polymers or, or base polymers themselves, uh, we are looking to add strength or some degree of thermal, again, or electrical conductivity. And there are a whole range of applications where, where we think graphene may have applicability. But our whole strategy is to demonstrate a modicum of, of mechanical properties, a modicum of performance, and then hang on to the inventor's coattails and satisfy them with the material. Okay, we are not going to be the people that are saying, this is how you do it, this is what you should be doing. And in the field of uh, functional fluids, oils, lubricants, again, working, uh, working structures, allowing them to, to operate at higher speeds and conduct heat away from the working parts is, is a real challenge and at the same time adding a degree of lubricity and that's where graphene has some applicability. So these, these are the kind of target markets and we're very much dependent on wetting the imagination of our potential customers. So as, as, a, as a business, and I can only talk really about the last 18 months um, since I've been there, um, the scalability of the process and demonstrating that this is nice in principle, but can we do it in reality, is a real credibility gap that we've had to overcome. 
Um, we've needed the challenge of how do we introduce the feedstock and how do we deal with uh, efficient collection of the product coming out the other end. How can we demonstrate that this is a repeatable uh, process that we can get a degree of consistency on quality? And then how can we create data on our product um, from credible sources that are verifiable, not our own biased measured properties, but somebody who's believable and has got standards, uh, industry standard techniques for, for measurement. Um, and then putting the product into, into uh, reality and getting proof of performance, getting traction that way. And then another valuable service is, is providing a network of, of support because we are currently a team of 30 people. When I joined, we were seven people. Um, and you don't have all the facilities yourself and that, you don't need to have all the facilities. If you've got a good support network around you, um, then uh, you can tap into that. And CPI have simply assisted with all these challenges. Uh, I'm quite fortunate that in my previous job, I didn't understand the sort of the open innovation approach. I'd engaged with one of the other catapult centres before, and you know, Dick's here. So there's, there's seven in the high value manufacturing that offer different uh, facets uh, of, of service provision. So I was already sold on the, on the engagement with catapults and within the first four weeks, I know Nigel came around to our factory within four weeks, weeks of me joining and, uh, and I was very much open-minded about how we could tap into the kind of services that CPI provide. Of course, you know, you have to have many different ingredients to get a, a successful formula. And I, I describe this as the first couple of chapters in our story. Hopefully, it'll be quite a long novel altogether. Um, we need an understanding that innovation takes a while to come through to commercialization. So by, by our AIM listing, hopefully, we've got uh, the right sort of shareholder support um, with a more of a long-term horizon. Certainly by the, the refinancing that we, we've gone through, it's, helped, it's raised our profile and that's helped in peripheral ways to let us punch above our weight effectively. We are benefiting indirectly from UK government support. Um, I, I would say that Graphene has probably had more than its fair share of direct support. I'm not complaining about that. I'll ride the wave like anyone else. Uh, and what we need to do is make sure that's absolutely focused, hitting, hitting real opportunities and hitting them now, and not, look, not just being a talking shop, but we actually need to do something with that investment now. Because although the UK is investing quite heavily in graphene, if you benchmark that against other countries around the world, I'd say we're kind of in the championship. We're not in the premiership. And we're certainly not in Division 1 or 2, but there's, there's more to go. There is a billion euros of funding from uh, the Graphene flagship, which is uh, a European uh, Union uh, uh, funding commitment of uh, over 10 years. So we're, we're, we're hoping that we can also access that and leverage off reasonable, reason, regional support for, for our business expansion. We're a, a tenant on the Wilton site at this point in time. I'm already out looking for what, where's the next step, where's that building going to be, what, what scale of production facility do we need. Um, this isn't two or three years away, this is now. And, and behind all this, and, and it, you know, we've, we've kind of touched on um, people talent and, and attracting the right skills, um, but it is about great people. When, you, when I dissect everything back down, yeah, you've got to have great ideas, you've got to have this ingredient, you've got to, but you've got to have great people. And it's not just about attracting great people, it's about providing a fantastic environment for them to thrive. So continuous investment in, in skills development, but also in enjoyment <laughs> development as well. As well. Uh, and for me, that, that's what drives the best opportunity for success. So I hope that gives you a, a, a flavour of uh, our story so far and I hope to be able to tell you a couple more chapters in, in future years.